living beings and by living beings and birds, bees, insects, humans, animals, basically anything that breathes, depend on electricity. We are electric beings, <coughs> our heart and brain do not work without electric and energetic fields. Putting additional exposures into our system is something that we have to look at very carefully and recognise that the potential for harm is very great. On the environmental health website, ehtrust.org, you will be able to find a list of independent studies on millimetre wave radiation, which is 5G radiation. This is incredibly important because wireless industry admits they have done no health and safety studies on 5G, and based on sound hearings in the States, February 2019, they don't intend to and have no budget in the future to do so. It falls upon us to look into the existing research. 5G consists of a combination of 3 and 4G in order for it to work. To operate, it has to have a series of wireless transmitters within a few hundred metres of each other, and this is all you can see. So these wireless antennae emit non-ionising radio frequency radiation essentially function as a cell phone tower. Do we really want these sitting on power poles outside our houses, operating 24-7, massively increasing our radio frequency radiation 10 to hundreds of times greater than what exists today? I find this extremely worrying, as under current rules, often by the Minister for the Environment, we have no say in the location of these transmitters based on health concerns. These are some of the effects that have been known about 5G. It's not the power of the radiation, but the modulation of the signal that experts looking into the health effects of this form of non-iodizing radiation are not concerned about because it's moving extremely fast and it has the ability to alter the function of all healthy nerves and cells, also interfering with the way calcium moves in and out of the cell wall. The millimetre waves which 5G will use will weaken cell membranes, allowing toxic chemicals such as pesticides, cosmetics, cleaning agents, harbicides to be taken more deeply into the body where they can potentially do more harm. A growing number of publications show that 5G has the capacity to have serious biological effects, which may include reproductive impairment, early onset, Alzheimer's, fatigue, insomnia and many more serious effects that have been documented in peer-reviewed in peer reviewed publications. A study done with people living within eight years of 3D transmitter found that in the blood of those that were closest there were elevated indications of damage to their DNA. This is a precursor to cancer. Yet the telecommunication companies still insist there are no there are no known proven health issues within the two, three, and four KG systems. Globally, insurance groups are refusing to insure health claims against 5G technologies. Lloyd of London has put this in the same category as asbestos. This should be a warning to us all. Is it really worth the risk? <coughs> Yet again, we are to become guinea pigs in this unknown and untried experiment. Just as we were with the tobacco industry, asbestos, leaded fuel, Monsanto's glyphosate, big pharma, the list goes on. I hope the sense will prevail and this technology will not be established here. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. Councilor, any questions for Brent? We're good. Thank you. We appreciate that. Councilor, so that brings us to the end of our uh, public forum. And uh, thank you to all of our presenters uh, today. It certainly shows the power of the ability to have people come and speak to us on issues that are important to our community. Thank you. Okay. That's as it brings us to the item 5.1, the minutes of our council meeting held on Thursday the 29th of